Now let's continue adding some pieces to our character. So I want to add to this wooden cowl that we've created a big gold medallion that's going to kind of serve to visually connect this together and be very ornamental. And so the sculpted detail that we're going to put on this is going to be pretty intricate, but the actual model itself doesn't have to be that intricate. In addition, we want the geometry that we create here to be sculptable versus the production type geometry that we'll need to create later. So we'll kind of talk about what that means here in a second. So first I'm going to create just a basic shape. So the medallion is going to be basically a cylinder. So I'm going to create a polygon cylinder and I want to rotate it to 90 degrees in the X. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move it straight up. Let's go into the creation node and I want to keep these values here because we're going to come back to this file later, but I want to get it to be kind of the right size at least. All right. So take my radius down to 0.1. Let's take our, I'm sorry, that's the height. Take our radius down something a little bit smaller. So let's see, looking at this, I want it to be kind of right about here, but I don't want it to be quite that big. Let's do maybe 0.25 and a height of 0.05 and kind of put it up against here and we'll rotate it a little bit. So it's right up against the wood. So something like this is good. So I want to keep this version that has all of the uh, parameters open to us so that we can change them. I'm actually going to add, before we do this, I'm going to add a subdivision. Um, let's add a subdivision on the cap. Okay. So something like that. Now I want to still have this version when we come back to this file, but I want to change some things on the, on the file that we export to ZBrush. And so let's go ahead and duplicate this one and I'm going to hit control D just to duplicate. Let's go ahead and hide the original control H. And on this one, all I want to do is I want to change this center geometry. The reason for that is if we think about this as being subdivided, when we subdivide something, every quad gets split into four quads. And so if we have quads on our geometry, then all the topology all stays the same, if that makes sense. When we have a pole though, you can see where all these points are coming in right here, which is very efficient when you're creating a cylinder like this. But if we subdivide this, the poles only get worse, right? So you can subdivide these triangles, you can subdivide these again and again, but your pole is just going to have more and more edges coming into it. And so when we start to create detail here, that can kind of get messed up because we have these little artifacts because there's so many edges in there and all the lines are going in that same direction. So what I'm going to do is just clean this center portion up a little bit before we send this over to sculpt. So I'm going to just isolate this. So we're only dealing with this piece, I'm not going to move it or anything. So I want it to be in the exact same position. Okay. But I am going to go in and basically I'm going to leave the vertical and horizontal edges. And I'm going to select all of the other ones. And go ahead and delete those. And I'll do the same thing on the back. Make sure I get the right ones. So selecting basically the three between each horizontal and vertical, something like that. I'm going to go ahead and get the multi-cut tool. And I'm just going to draw across like this, across like that. Let's go ahead and come straight down from the middle like that. And then we can either go from top to bottom or we can go side to side. And then we have these quads on the corners. And so that just creates a little bit of a cleaner surface for us to sculpt when we start to subdivide this. Do the same thing here. And let's come down from the top. I'm just right clicking to end those lines. Okay. So now we have an object that is a little better for us to go in and sculpt. We can also add some support edges if we want to retain kind of the hardness of it as we subdivide it. 
but it gives us kind of a, a base to work from. Let's go ahead and turn off our isolate select. And we can name these as well. So we could call this medallion exports and medallion base, something like that. Okay, I also want to really quickly, since we created the bell, I do want to have a little uh, cube that sits behind here. So while we're here, I'm going to create that cube. And I just want it to be very basic. So I'm just going to come up and move it into position. Take the width down, take the height down, and the depth. And I want it to sit right behind here. So let's take our depth down a little bit. And we'll move it up here. I'm going to say 0.02 is probably good. And we can rotate it a little bit. We're going to have a, a buckle that sits in front of this. For the height, let's go 0.2. And then width, we'll try 0.2, but it might be a little bit too wide still. It's pretty close. Okay, so something like that. All right, so once we've got to this point, let's go ahead in the next clip and we're gonna create some kind of sashes that come down and hook on the belt and kind of uh, flow down to create a, even more kind of an ornamental look. And so we'll do that next.